in all my years of working with computers, I've never bought a, a NAS system. I've never felt the need to actually get one of these. And uh, mainly initially because I was using cloud services and sort of that was ticking the box there. But as I've been more recently pushing away from subscriptions and cloud services and trying to get control over my kind of personal computing stack a bit better myself, I have been drawing my attention towards more of a, a NAS style system in my house. And I think, you know, exploring different options. But, uh, but what's happened is I ended up vibe coding a whole bunch of these apps um, and I very quickly realized that I've actually sort of gone through this process of making a NAS system completely obsolete by doing this. I've, I've, I've just done it using my own computer and my own software. So in this video, I'm going to explain a little bit about how I've done this and what I've done and why I think the argument for a dedicated NAS unit now is weaker than ever. So we hear quite often that the software that you get with a NAS unit is generally pretty clunky compared to the more polished cloud versions. Obviously, people are making more money from cloud subscriptions than selling NAS units. So we get this idea that something like Apple Photos is generally a much more integrated, polished experience. But ultimately, for me, it's also incredibly feature lacking. You know, the emission of pro level culling tools just so obviously omitted from the features there to keep your library growing full of thousands of, of you know duplicate pictures and so on and not helping you actually delete that and get to the root cause of the problem and keep your library as small as possible um, so emission of things like that but also emissions of things like raw processing and color grading using LUTs and, and sort of presets powerful presets so I wanted to bring all of that into my own photo library tool which is what I did when I vibe coded my own photo library app um, but the way I did this in terms of building these apps was that I would build a web-based interface and run these things as like little web servers using Python just directly on my Mac. And that meant these bits of software were fully available on any machine on my local network. And it's very trivial to get these available to machines outside of your local network as well. You can use something like Tailscale, or you can use a VPS with a reverse SSH tunnel. Um, and you can, you can do this without exposing your IP address to anybody on the internet as well. So of course, this is what a NAS does. You know, you'll have this machine running in your house that will have software running on it that will share your media and in, in an app, you know, and you've got these different apps for different things, but they're all kind of very specific to the particular NAS units that you're buying into. Uh, and then there's this idea that they're even worse than the cloud versions of the, those applications. And for me, the cloud versions are already too limited for what I want. So there's really no argument for, from my perspective, drawing me into a dedicated NAS unit. And of course, it doesn't just stop with the software. You've got this hardware issue as well. Like you're buying an entirely new machine whose only role is to become this NAS. And I know I talk about using individual tools for doing one thing thing and doing one thing well but here I think this isn't actually doing it that well because it's a machine that you're spending a lot of money on that's still not going to be really powerful enough or certainly not as powerful as something like my new Mac mini which can do things like raw processing and video grading using LUTs in no time at all that NAS is going to be an inferior um, approach to that than just using my own personal computer for this purpose so I think the right tool for the job in this case is obviously my most powerful computer and of course, we have the economies of scale that Apple are able to offer these things like the Mac mini computers, which just represent pretty incredible value. They run almost silently. They're perfectly happy just being left on all of the time because of their insanely low power use. They really are the best way of thinking about this. And you can easily run these DIY software scripts on this Mac without it impacting performance, taking any performance away from whatever else you're doing uh, on that Mac as well. So I've basically built this suite of tools to recreate my own NAS style system running on my own Mac. Um, and this includes the photo library application, which has just got insane power face detection, raw processing, video color grading, and so on. So then I've got this email tool, which I've done another video on, um, which allows me to compose in NeoVim and then use fast keyboard shortcuts for processing my email and getting back to inbox zero really quickly, which is just, again, a perfect application to run in this way over a network through a web browser. And the other one, of course, is my music streaming application, which is obviously one of the primary roles you might have um, a sort of media streamer running on a NAS system. So I've, I've ticked that box very easily here as well and created a UI that I think is really pleasant to use, much simpler and more engaging and more focused on the album artwork and the experience of playing with the visualizations running as well, um, all of these kinds of simple things. And then I've got this other, another nice little one, which on my mind is replacing Siri, where I can put a voice question in and it will search my own Zettelkasten notes vault and give me a text response. Response. So a good example of how I can use this is I could ask for my recipe for my shampoo, um, but instead of it just showing me the actual original document where I have that recipe, I could ask it for a different quantity and it would go through and convert all of those ingredients in the recipe to make my new desired quantity and it would spit that back. Um, you know, I can ask it for talks for different bolts while I'm working on my Land Rover. I can just pick my phone up and talk into it and get the talk back. Um, these kinds of real life workflows I've found incredibly useful to run in this way as well. So obviously this idea is all based on this idea of vibe 
started coding these tools, I don't think anyone would have the spare time to put into these kind of personal projects if they were to have to write the code for all of these themselves. And that's what's so fascinating about this, because the existence and emergence of this vibe coding thing has just meant this entire business model of um, selling dedicated NAS units, which is you know, essentially a sort of software stack on top of fairly limited, overpriced kind of hardware. Um, it's kind of just taken the legs out from that in my mind, at least it certainly has for me. And, you know, I'd hear, hear this argument that a NAS system is, is much more plug and play than this, obviously, you know, but then for people who aren't that tech savvy and just want plug and play, then surely the cloud versions of those things are the easiest option for them to get into anyway. They've got all of these things already on their phone. So now that people with a bit of understanding of software development can vibe code their own tools. I think most people using NAS systems are pretty tech savvy kind of people. I really struggle to see the justification for these kinds of things now. And then in terms of this big picture discussion about AI and vibe coding, this is uh, was, you know, really interesting. It was an ongoing discussion about the ethics of it and all of this and whether we should be looking to a future where we're offloading huge amounts of computer power to these vast data centers and huge corporations that are running these AI data centers. And these things have issues with using fresh water and all of this. Obviously, there are all kinds of technologies being explored um, that don't just deplete our fresh water supply and are more energy efficient and all of these kinds of things. But we're also alongside all of this, we're seeing um, major advantages in open source models that you can run on your own machine. My M4 Pro Mac Mini can run 14 billion parameter models reasonably well in terms of sort of overall um, cleverness is, is some way behind cloud code but it's a sign that things are going in, the, in this direction you know two or three years from now when apple hardware has continued on its its current trajectory and is just blazingly fast and wildly good value and incredibly energy efficient all these incredible advances in personal computing hardware people are going to be able to run their own models on this you know and, and we'll just have this distributed much easier to load balance power requirements rather than just having to to make these individual data centers work in one place which obviously means all the energy and all the water cooling abilities needs to be condensed into one place. Clearly, it's easier as a society if we distribute this across um, and just run it sort of on demand on our own little bits of hardware. I think um, this is just my sort of, you know, always looking for an optimistic take on this. So I think, um, you know, I don't necessarily see this as all roads lead to us just, uh, you know, constantly pushing all our data off to massive corporations and huge data centers. I think there will be this uh, decentralized approach to this as well. So I think for me, this has been the conclusion to a really long um, take on on looking at the justification for NAS units. You know, I've always had this idea in the back of my mind as to whether there's utility in one, you know, do I need to go down this road? And then I look at the price and think, I can't really justify that, you know, considering what they do. Yet I still don't really have a proper network sharing applications, sharing system in my house. So I sort of, you know, was in that limbo position for some time. And now with this AI vibe coding thing and building these tools, I've sort of inadvertently built my own network Work, attached storage and streaming sharing system uh, running off my most powerful Mac in the house um, with no compromise and no additional cost associated with that. So I really am struggling to see the justification for a NAS unit now. So let me know if I've missed anything. Is there some, some brilliant justification for these things that isn't answered by this idea of just putting your own tools together and running them on your most powerful machine that's always plugged in kind of thing? Love to hear those comments below. I'll link to the video that I've done on my email tool, which is one of the most exciting of all of the tools that I've built here, uh, and I'll see you there.